Hi friends. It's Wednesday and it's Wednesdays with Whitney. And I am here today to talk about navigating feedback. Huge, tough subject and I'm just gonna dive right in. And mostly we're gonna talk about navigating feedback that we get on social media, but this topic applies everywhere in our lives. And I want to start with a quote by, I believe, Rachel Hollis. Tell me if I'm misquoting her, but she said, someone else's opinion of you is none of your business. Someone else's opinion of you is none of your business. And I loved thinking through that. It's great to have that in your back pocket of like, it's none of my business. But at the same time, that's this attitude of, well, I don't have to care about what they think. All I have to care about is what I think, which is accurate. But as we're navigating feedback and perhaps it's negative feedback, if it hits a chord with us, there is something within us that is resonating with that. So I wanna talk through a few examples that have happened in my life and some stories that I've heard and just chat a little bit about what this might actually mean in context and what our brains might actually be doing. Um, so my personal story, I remember it so vividly, it was a couple years ago now, and I was putting together a presentation and I put together a survey and I was just basically trying to validate myself. The questions were all aimed at, you know, had being photographed changed the way they saw themselves? Yes, no, um, just like the topic of like, what did being photographed do for you, if anything? And it was a lot about the services I provide and what I could do better and different things like this. And, you know, I pretty much put that survey out there just thinking, oh, like, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna hear lots of good things about what I do in the world. And for the most part, that was 100% true. I had so many people respond to the survey, say really great things, offer amazing feedback, offer some constructive feedback. But as I was going through, there was, there was a common thread. There was one person, one survey entry that was very obviously not, not on my team or I had not served them or it had not gone well. And I kept reading this through and I kept reading their responses. And the one that hit me was saying something to the effect of, you know, Whitney always takes really great photos, but that didn't happen with me and my experience. And I'm really disappointed. You guys, I was supposed to give this presentation and I actually canceled, like I, it was something I could opt out of, so I did. I opted out of this presentation because I was so taken down by one person's feedback and over a hundred people responded to this thing. But one person, I had not shown up in the way that they needed me to. One person was dissatisfied with me and that one person completely got to run the show. So, you know, I call my people and my people are like, okay, you got one person out of a hundred, like you can let that go. But I was like, what is this that's resonating with me? And you know, I went through all of the stuff, like trying to figure out who it was, trying to make excuses for myself, trying to do all of this. And at some point I just had to accept that their experience was their experience, but something in me thought they were right. Something in me thought that I was not good enough. Something in me thought that I was not serving people well enough or I was not showing up enough. Because if I didn't believe what they said, I could have just let it go. And I think that happens so much with negative feedback is that we, we hear it and if a part of us believes it, or if a part of us believes that we, we wanna stop something, or we wanna walk away from something, or we want to let go of something, if a part of us believes that, we are gonna latch on to the negativity of others and how they are expressing that towards us in a real way as our truth. Another example of this. I was talking to a good friend, someone who does great things in this community, and she has been doing some really amazing nonprofit work. And you know, she's, she's someone who has started an initiative on her own to help a nonprofit. And she has been getting a lot of really positive attention for this, 
deserved positive attention. She also happens to be a small business owner. And I have loved watching this journey. I'm so proud of this person. And we were talking the other day and it came up that somebody in her community had reached out and said, and basically told her that it was their opinion that they were only, that she was only doing this to increase her business to increase visibility of her business, that you shouldn't do good things, that in her opinion, doing this good thing was only for the reason of getting attention for her business. And, and my friend confessed that this had been holding her back, that this had been holding her back from continuing to do this really good thing. And I was so honored that this person chose to share because she got to hear not just from myself, but for, from a couple other people in that conversation, how unfounded that statement was. And she got to have all of that positive reinforcement, but it didn't stop the fact that it stopped her. So there is something in there, right? When somebody says, oh, okay, so if, you know, if the core message here is, we cannot do good things to receive good attention, like that's bad, then there might be something in us that's like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be trying to get attention. Maybe I shouldn't be, you know, doing these things. Maybe this is too much. Maybe I'm doing too much. And is that stopping us? And, you know, I, I just think like, if we can put more good out in the world, then that's incredible. And if somebody sees that and says, oh, you're just looking to profit, that's something in them. But it doesn't matter what's in them if it, if it hurts us, if it triggers us, if it causes us pain and to stay up at night. So we experience feedback all the time on the internet. If we are putting ourselves out there, we are experiencing feedback. The like button is feedback. Comments on your posts are feedback. The most common reason people tell me that they don't show up on the internet is because they are scared that they won't get any feedback. And all I can say to that is showing up is risky. People will always have feedback. But what is even more risky is to not put ourselves out there, remain silent, and then not really know what we're capable of. What's more risky is not speaking our truth and I have realized over the past, I would say year, as I've been dealing with a lot of feedback and then really working on things in myself, that when I am not feeling centered, when I'm not feeling grounded, when I'm not feeling like I know what I want, that is when people's opinions matter to me. When, I am, when I'm shaky, I'm looking everywhere else but me to stabilize. I'm looking for opinions, I'm looking for validation. And we can see that on the internet. Like we can see like when people are looking for validation or if they're looking to put good out there in the world. We are, we can see all of this, it's so transparent. So what I always, what I think about navigating feedback is that if you receive feedback that hurts and you're processing it, just cut the other person out of that for a second and Think about what part of that is true to you? What part of that do you think is true? And then when you think about what part of that is true, is that really the truth? So when this person said that they didn't think that I um, had taken good photos of them, what I heard was that I didn't serve them very well. What I might think about this person on the other end is maybe they, were ever, they weren't ever gonna be pleased or maybe I didn't serve them well. That's totally a possibility. But what I had to confront in myself is that part of me believed that I still wasn't doing a good enough job. That part of me believed that I wasn't bulletproof and that it was really, really important to me to be bulletproof. And that one comment showed me that I wasn't. And so what I, the work I really had to do was getting used to the fact that people are gonna have negative opinions about me. People are going to say things that I don't like about me and that that has, that's okay. I don't have to be bulletproof. 
I can feel that. I can mess up. I can make big mistakes and people can talk about it. I had to let go of the need to be perfect because people were going to poke holes in it anyway. So we all get feedback every day, whether we're in meetings, we are talking to our partners, we are talking to our kids, and we get to navigate what part of that is true and what is the, the step below that truth. Because a lot of times the surface thing is like, oh, well, you know, cool. But if you go two layers deep on that, you're gonna find what you don't believe about yourself or what you need to work on in yourself. And I know that from personal experience. Every single time I like go in my hole because somebody says something really nice, I have to do the hard work and figure out why it struck a chord. So I hope you all are having a wonderful Wednesday. I hope you're all receiving incredibly positive feedback for everything that you're doing in your life. But know if that, if negative feedback ever comes your way, it is about them but it's an opportunity for us to figure out what's going on inside of ourselves that is making it such a big deal. So big hugs to you all, and I will see you next week.